in the Dubuque County Board of Supervisors meeting, Monday, January 13th, 2020, uh, ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. First uh, item uh, is uh, we have public comments. Uh, at this time, anyone may address the board on matters which are on the agenda. Uh, please go to the podium and state your name and home address if you have anything uh, on uh, anything that's on the agenda. Um, is there anyone to speak? Seeing none, uh, we'll move to uh, item number one on the agenda, which is uh, proclamations. I don't think we have any uh, this time. Uh, item number two, we do have approval of minutes of the January 2nd and January 6th, 2020 meetings. And I have a question about the um, assignments to committees. <coughs> there is one assignment, um, Dubuque, let's see, it's Dubuque Area Transportation Study, the Policy Committee, and that should, I should be designated as the designee there. I'm on... Not giving me pages here, sorry. Which one is that? It's in the it's on January second and it's yeah. in the so it is the Duke Area Transportation Study RPA Finance, Policy Committee. Nine. Eight or nine? Yes, I think it's nine. I see the pages there. So it's the third line. It's left open right now. Dubuque Area Transportation Study RPA Policy Committee? Correct. Okay. And you're, you're feeling you should be in there? I'm, I'm comfortable with that. That's what you're requesting? Well, that's what I've been attending. <clears throat> okay. And we left the early childhood board um, open. We're going to revisit that one. That's why there's nothing there. That's my understanding as well. <clears throat> Okay, any other discussions on the minutes? Make a motion to approve with that amendment. And I will second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve the minutes as corrected. No further discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. All right, we have uh, consent items. So we have, uh, uh, this is item number three on the agenda. Uh, we have the quarterly report of the uh, auditor. And the consent, I think we can do all three of those, right? So uh, that's 3A is quarterly revenue report of the auditor. 3B, quarterly revenue report of the recorder. And 3C, quarterly revenue report of the sheriff. Motion to receive and file the quarterly reports. Okay. I will second that. Motion made and seconded to approve the three consent items. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. Item 4, proof of publication. We don't have any today. So we go to item five. We have the uh, secondary roads, five-year plan. Um, excuse me. Um, oh, the notice. Okay, proof of publication. Oh. Okay. Notice of public hearing amendment to secondary roads, five-year plan. All right, I got it. And when will that be? 
January 27th. And I just figured out what NPH means. <laughs> notice of public hearing. I will make a motion to approve the notice of public hearing for the five-year plan on January 27th at 5.30 in this very same room. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. It only takes me a little over three years to catch on to all the acronyms. It's a new year, Dave. Yeah. It's, uh, we, we all have a chance to learn something. And new. I didn't but have to. I didn't have to say that out loud. <laughs> all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. All right. Uh, next up on the uh, agenda is item number six: approval of plats. So we will go to uh, our um, zoning administrator, Tammy Henry, and I see Angie Steffens is here to uh, ably assist. I'm going to get this thing on as soon as I can here. And Tammy, you've got a Angie, you, you, you're having her learn the ropes for pres presenting and that type of thing, right? Right. right. That, that, Oh, I. Good move and, and good, good experience for Angie and good leadership on your part. And, yeah, very thorough test because it's you know. And we're also going to. Uh, um, oh. We're also going to be. Um, we are working on trying to start presenting the zoning code update, and we're getting those documents ready to start going to the zoning board and then to move those documents forward to you. So we need to meet with Denise on how we're going to get those all in line for you. And so that's the thing that we're doing after this meeting, OK? OK. OK, so are you ready? I'm ready. OK, <clears throat> so this property is uh, Joseph O'Neill's third subdivision final plot. The property is owned by Michael and Joan Bessler and is located 0.57 miles east of the city of Farley along Old Highway Road with a total of 8.664 acres surveyed. The property is zoned R2 single family residential. The purpose of this plat is to separate the current home and to sell it to the son and daughter-in-law who currently live in the home and convert the detached garage into a new home site. Lot one is a total of 6.695 acres surveyed with a detached garage that will be converted into a new home. Lot two is a total of 1.96 acres surveyed with a home and it will be sold to the son and daughter-in-law remain in current residential use. Lot 1 will have a 30-foot access easement across Lot 2, and it will use the existing residential access off of Old Highway Road. There were no additions or corrections required for this plat. There are no liens or mortgages on this property. Some of the signatures are over 60 days old, and they include the surveyor, September 23rd of 2019, the attorney of November 12th, 2019, the city of Dubuque, October 7th of 2019, County Planning and Zoning, October 15th of 2019. This plat's been reviewed by myself as the plats officer and has all the required signatures. I respectfully recommend approval. So what's happening here is I'll show you. You can see where the easement is and you can see where the, the existing house is. So what's, when you look at this, there's a home here. The glare, I'm going to show you. There's a, a, a garage here. This is going to be platted off. They're separate from each other. They meet the requirements for, for um, platting and they're zoned residential. And this is going to be converted into a home. Why are some of the signatures more than 60 days old? I have not seen that before. It, actually, it has happened to us, and what happens sure. is, is people get busy and they just don't get it finished. And, and this if time it gets the to the point where it's a year, mm -hmm. then we have to come in and ask for you to give an extension if they haven't finished it, or they would have to start all over. So, so you'll get signatures that are old because of just something's happened and they've gotten behind, and maybe attorney didn't get to it or whatever it took. So why did you draw our attention to that? Because we always do. We always have. And if that's something you want us to change and not do that, we can do that. I'm just trying to understand because sure, sure. it seems different to me. I, you have I, heard it before. Maybe just don't recall that, but we have <laughs> done that before. Yeah, I, th I think it's in there when when that occurs. It's in there. Yeah, it's always been there. And like I said, if it's something you want us to change, we can easily do that. Maybe you can 
remind me related to our uh, water and, and sewer. And so these being separate parcels, could they have a shared well but separate sewer? This, I believe these ones are going to have a shared well, but they will have to have separate sewers. Separate sewers. Separate. Okay. And we normally would inspect those. Is that yeah. right? Um, well, that's where your health department, your, um, that department will come in and make sure that those meet those requirements. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, as far as access, has that been Yeah, access determined? is they're using the same, and you can see the easement there. They're using the same entrance, so there's no new entrance accessing this property. Excellent. Thank you. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the plat as presented. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve the plat. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. Next up, we have uh, resolution final plat, White Llama subdivision, section 10, Table Mound Township. I'm trying to get this in where you can see it as well. <clears throat> okay, uh, the property is owned by Jeffrey and Don Manders and is located 0.56 miles west of the city of Dubuque along Oakland Farms Road with a total of 68.25 acres surveyed. The property is zoned A1 agricultural and R2 single family residential. There was a rezoning of this property on um, April of uh, 2019. Uh, the purpose of this plan is to uh, separate the existing home from the ag land for finance purposes. Lot one is a total of 3.25 acres with an existing home and it will remain in current ownership and use. Lot two is a total of 65 acres with an ag building and it will remain in current ownership and agricultural use. Lot one and lot two will use an existing shared 66 foot wide access off of Oakland Farms Road. There were no additions or corrections required for the plant. The mortgage holder's acknowledgement is signed and attached, and some of the signatures are over 60 days old, and they include the surveyor of March 25th, 2019, county planning and zoning June 16th of 2019. There was a delay in this case, I can tell you, because of an illness in the family. And we had approved the zoning separately? Yes, that was already done prior to the platting. And I'm... And we did R2 just to match uh, the subdivision across the road? Right. That's right. Okay. And I can show you. So the R2 is in this area. <clears throat> we haven't changed the mapping yet because we don't change that until we get this platting done. Mm -hmm. um, and then the remainder will stay in the egg. And the access to that parcel will be a shared one? It also is a shared access with an easement. So it's still coming off of here, and these will be shared. Excellent. Thank you. Make a motion to approve the plat. And I will second that. And Anthony, you don't have any issues with this. It's pretty routine. Okay. All in favor, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good week, everybody. You too. Thanks, All right. Uh, next up is item seven under action items. So we have a uh, resolution 7A, uh, appointment of deputies, assistants, and clerks. We do not have any. Okay. Good. I was looking for it. Go right to 7B, the semi-annual deer status report. Make a motion to approve. I will second that. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. All right. Uh, next up is uh, uh, item C, 7C, resolution approving the DNR master matrix relating to the construction of a confinement feeding operation structure. This is our annual um, construction evaluation resolution that we must submit by the end of January, by January uh, 31st, I believe. Mary did check for me, and it is the same resolution that we have filed in the past. Okay. I'm just learning more about it. It seemed unfamiliar to me, but okay. um, it's the same. So I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. And I will second that. Motion made and seconded to approve the Master Matrix uh, Construction Evaluation Resolution. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. Three to zero. All right. Uh, next up, we have the uh, 7D, which is a resolution approving the use of 
vehicle, use of vehicle administration, administrative policy. So the use of vehicle administrative policy is what the resolution is related to. John, maybe you can help me with this. I was looking for the area that referred to kind of distracting driving and or electronic devices, and I couldn't uh, reference that back. Did you put anything in there regarding that? Um, there was original language in there because I commented on oh, it. Oh, hold on, let me. Where I made the here. comment that would that because it, there was a comment related to even the the rules apply to personal vehicles as well. And I just couldn't find the language anymore, and so. About having to pull over, or you said? Uh, I think there was a. Sure. So, so two questions, where where is the language, if we can find it, related to electronic devices, phones, basically, and then hands-free? And then secondly, that applying to county employees in their personal vehicles related to county business. That's num under number six. Is number that six. What you're referring to? I'm not sure. Okay. Employees required, thank you. That's why I couldn't find it before. Employees required to obey all federal laws and driving vehicles, including CCC Bill 100, required all forms of electronic communication is prohibited during the operation. All cell phone use while driving should be limited. Extended cell phone conversations need to be held with a parked vehicle. And I think what the next part you're looking at is number 12 there. Let me just see if I can get six right in my head first. All forms of electronic communication is prohibited during the operation of a county vehicle. Any cell phone use. So are we differentiating cell phone use and electronic communication? Is that the intent? So texting and emailing is electronic communication and cell phone use is just talking? Well, texting is, I think that's under state law that you cannot do that. And that refers to that the drivers must obey all federal and state laws. Well, so I, texting I, is already prohibited by state law, not just our policy. So maybe my question to the board and others would be, is you know your first statement the use of all forms of electronic communication is prohibited during the operation of vehicle so you have that statement and then right next to it any cell phone use should be limited nature and so is everyone clear on those two statements so do you consider a call electronic communication yes okay then it would be prohibited so then you can't have it be limited if it's prohibited that's the way I read it. It seems confusing. Good on folks. And I remember we had this brief discussion in our work session as well. So, Jay, I guess I want to jump in. I know we had at least one of our vehicles, I recall, uh, that we ordered. They asked for, and, and we granted the uh, Bluetooth capability. Now, you're, are you? My question is, would you consider that electronic communication? As it says, all forms, okay, that's pretty big, of electronic communication is prohibited during the operation of a vehicle. So how would you read that? It should say something that is except cell phones, which are governed by, I mean, yeah, it is, it is contradictory. Because I do think we want people to be able to use their cell phones briefly. Hands-free with accordance to state law. Mm -hmm. And we want to encourage Bluetooth if that's... And, what we have. And, and if not, then we shouldn't be adding Bluetooth as an option. Uh, but I think I don't think that's that's not what I'm saying. But that's I think what the policy is saying is. Yeah. Uh, so I think Supervisor McDonough is generally agreeing with me that it's confusing language. And I know we talked about this last time. So I would I don't know if you need guidance to clean it up. It just seems that electronic communication is just kind of a generic term, and it's not really a clean term. And uh, you could just be maybe more explicit. So, just so I'm clear, you you do not want to prohibit the use of a Bluetooth device. I would want to, first of all, be in accordance to the state law, which my understanding is hands-free. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Gen General, that's well. a layman's term. Hands-free. You can go to. You might even want to reference that code, um, but hands-free. And so, if it's the only way you can 
have a call and be hands-free as if you use some sort of electronic communication. And so that, hence, that's my, my, why this doesn't make sense. Do you want to go ahead and table this then? We probably will. Maybe we can go to the second part then. What was my, my second part was related to personal use of the vehicles and where was that at? That's 12, okay. Um, maybe not 12, but I was thinking 12. Use of county business, 12, okay. I think Second had, 12. Yeah, there's 12's numbered twice. That's what I would just, yeah. And I, I, w I had a question on the other number 12. I just wanted to <laughs> clarify, so. What would the chair like to do? Hit my 12 or your no, 12? I'll let you go. You, I'm, I'm yielding to you and then I'll Take come Jay back. Take Jay Wickham's uh, use of private vehicles for county business number 12. Um, okay, all policy provisions employees using county vehicle apply to employees using the purpose of county related things. So, um, so one, I think with clear language in the above paragraph, this, this will help us, but uh, I do engage in what people probably would consider more lengthy communication, hands-free in my personal vehicle, which this would be prohibited. I'm not sure either of you two do. I don't believe the supervisors are subject to this. If you look at. Sure. <laughs> you had to say that in public? <laughs> <laughs> do as well, I say, not as I do. And I'm going to sound hypocritic <laughs> when I talk about carpooling, but uh, okay. we can't ride well, together. So. I, I mean, I see us as obviously we are employees, we also are elected officials. Um, well, then maybe that's the first question to the board. Do you want to be exempt from these policies? Change the scope of it? Well, otherwise we have to dif differentiate because of the carpooling. And also, I, I mean, I've talked to Sheriff Kennedy as we drive, you know, with Bluetooth. I mean, I do make phone calls as well. Me using hands-free, I think we all do. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's my question. Then it's you know, or if we're exempt, then then it doesn't really it potentially doesn't matter. What you're telling is other county employees they should not make lengthy calls. So if we're talking to one of them, <laughs> you 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 can't be making lengthy calls. Yeah, we we would ask that they would pull over to a safe spot. Or, and are we saying that that's other elected officials who are also county employees? That, that's my it's question. The same if they concern. choose to apply it, the, the elected officials get to decide if they want to use this policy for their staff. Is that stated in the policy? Yes. That's Is it for them and their staff? Yes. So that's under the scope. <clears throat> employees. Right so it's. So it's if the, the elected officials have the authority to apply, to use this. I mean, we, we offer it out to them um, to <clears throat> use how they see or if they want to. It's an option. Otherwise, they can have their own. And would we require them to submit their own if they don't abide by this? I've never had that question. I. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I I have had discussion with one of our um, elected officials about carpooling okay. and, and uh, uh, that person seems very uh, willing to cooperate and, and, and follow this when they can. Um, um, so I, I guess I'll go into, I'm going to go to my number 12 just for a I'm second. Fine, yeah. uh, <clears throat> I've, a pet peeve of mine has been when I see uh, people going to the same conference but taking different vehicles, personal vehicles, and the county reimbursing for mileage. So what I have seen more recently is uh, good explanations on, uh, on the, better explanations on the forms. One stating basically they only claimed mileage one way because they were gonna stay in that area for a few extra days. And I think that's good, that's positive. Uh, and the other was, they were coming, they lived in a different town uh, that's quite a ways out of the area and said they didn't ha weren't at the same starting point and uh, so they weren't able to carpool and I agree with that. 
that those are good exceptions. But uh, uh, so, um, and I and I think, uh, and I don't even know if this is new language. It is, it is. okay. So, um, and again, it, it may seem hypocritical, uh, but Ann and Jay and I can't ride together. But my first trip to Des Moines um, for an ISAC meeting, I rode with uh, County Auditor Dolan and County Sheriff Kennedy. That was carpooling. Uh, and I got to ride in the sheriff's car. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's what, when we can do it, that's what we should do. Um, so, and there are counties that disregard the recommendations about um, having a quorum in the same vehicle but we're not one of them so but uh, so I, I I'm uh, and I believe that our uh, um, our elected officials are on board with this but there are going to be exceptions so uh, but I think it is heading in the right direction so those are only my two areas and it seems like they've, they've been addressed the rest of the document I'm comfortable with uh, does the board want to have a rewording of that paragraph related to electronic devices and then come back to this? Yes, and it needs to have some renumbering. Has County Attorney May seen this? Okay. And that's probably why we have two 12s in there. Is, yeah, so yeah. Blame it on the County Attorney. Um, <laughs> the other question I would have is uh, for the engineering and then admin do we have a fleet management system at all I noticed you provided a spreadsheet of all the various types of vehicles from motor graders to just normal passenger vehicles that that actually came from our budget director because that is what's submitted through insurance so it's just a spreadsheet that she tracks for insurance purposes if the board would be interested we might want to look at you know possibly getting a fleet management system that number of, of vehicles uh, I think you'd have value in just organizing and managing them for all their routine maintenance you've got that for most of your heavy operation your equipment we use something called manager plus okay um, it it keeps track of um, when we're at the fuel pump we enter our mileage and then it keeps track of um, that mileage and when um, an oil change is getting close it'll it'll notify the shop foreman uh, stuff like that so it's okay. yeah and for today for our, our other fleet for the other departments they're just responsible for that maintenance themselves correct the sheriff maintains all of theirs um, and then our facilities superintendent does it for the very there's uh, so. veterans IT his department um, health and conservation zoning. no conservation does their own as well okay and, and just in general Tammy you may want to and Angie um, we have upgraded uh, I mean some of our departments used to get leftover sheriff's cars that some of them weren't fit to go outside of the, <coughs> the county um, and we have uh, made sure that our employees have reliable transportation and with that the expectation is if you're going uh, somewhere that you take the county vehicle and uh, uh, the, you know that's uh, yeah <laughs> yep. okay I'll make a motion to uh, table the resolution related to the use of vehicle administration policy second okay motion made and seconded the table um, this uh, resolution <coughs> any further discussion all in favor signify by saying aye 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 carry uh, 7e resolution approving the cell phone administrative policy I don't know Don if you want to this one we uh, updated um, we really just kind of tossed out the old one and started new I worked with um, our budget director and the auditor and her staff when we went through this um, really um, part of the reason we did this is we wanted to put some parameters about who is eligible for a cell phone um, you know that we put some considerations in there so the elected official our department head um, to use when determining if <coughs> a uh, county issue phone should be um, given to an employee or if a stipend would be a better fit in that situation 
So we, a lot of it was the eligibility that had not been in a previous policy. One of the items I did not see is the monthly stipend amount, either a recommendation or a range. We have in there that the Board of Supervisors would determine that each year, and we would have that through the budget process. Okay, and, and will, be, will we be addressing that in this upcoming the budget? budget process? Because right now we I'm, have a mixed bag. That's correct. We have two different tiers, I believe. I mean, we certainly can address it in the budget. We got a lot of things going on in budget. I would, I would recommend looking at that stipend amount exactly at the same time you're looking at this resolution and this policy. They seem to be very tightly combined. And if there's, I don't know if we've gotten recommendations or otherwise, I mean, I, I don't think we want to go through every individual person and their stipend amount. If, if you would be able to provide ranges and or guidelines, that would be helpful for me. Why didn't you include that in this result? In this actual policy, put the actual dollar amount in, just or a range. I mean, why did you leave it to be determined annually? Was there a reason why you left it that way? Because if we put a range in there, we'd have to change, update the policy if that range ever moves. So we left it very generic, so we don't have to change the policy anytime that range would move. But we'd have to do it <coughs> during budget anyway, right? If you want to change it from year to year. <laughs> so you're going you're going to change it either way. You're going to state it because we have to have those dollar amounts in the budget. And, and my memory was that the whole the whole dollar amount is about 5,000 a month from this from spreadsheet. From the report, yes. Yeah, from the report and spreadsheet. So it's pretty significant. So the other question I would have is, is the board interested in, in looking at how to either make that more efficient or more standardized or be comfortable with that level? So I you know, went over the high level. We've got numerous carriers, which could be a good thing related to you know what our use is but it's a significant enough dollar amount that you might want to look at it over 60 grand a year I, I think it's uh, worth looking at uh, and whether we do that um, through the budget process or in a work session but I, I don't disagree with supervisor Wickham that once we establish it if we work on it during this budget cycle that maybe we work it into the uh, uh, agreement but I, I, I some of the there's some questions I have. We have entire departments, some which I don't think we control, but uh, uh, we have entire departments where everybody gets a stipend. And my guess is that within those departments, there's some that probably get called all the time and some that get called very seldom. Are, are we paying a stipend because they may be called at some time? Well, or? right now we're, we've left it up to the department head. Right. So it's not necessarily just being called off after hours. It could be during their actual work day as well because um, we have several locations. I'm thinking of uh, facilities and IT particularly. They get called on their cell phones during their work day as well. So it's not just after hours because of the mobility that, that they need to have. And I don't doubt that IT gets calls, but I don't think every one of them uh, gets calls on a regular basis. And I guess what I would say is this level of conversation about whether or not it's appropriate that a particular department or person gets a phone would be the reason why we want to have this broad language that the supervisors will set the, the amount in the budget session. Because I think that cell phone usage and who gets it shouldn't be in this policy. It would be in our annual budget as we look at each department. You know, in terms of we want to do that with each department to see, I don't disagree. I think $5,000 is a significant amount of money every month. and. But that will be addressed over time and through the budget as we see each department come forward, if we care to look at it that way. But for this policy, I, I actually preferred your language that it would be set by the supervisors. Otherwise, we have to do the policy and the supervisor's budget. They, we're going to have this discussion about policy every year. It would be nice to get some policies set that just move forward with the other things about the termination after you know letting us know within five days. I mean, there's other things that should be in the policy that are good ideas, whether however much the stipend is and however many departments are covered. Okay, well, I, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I think uh, uh, as far as setting the, um, you know, the amount, uh, 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 I think we need to do that and have a discussion on that. But I'm also, I guess what I'm asking is, do we have 
an audit process to see if anyone is getting a stipend who doesn't deserve it? I would say no, because we have not, I mean, we put the eligibility requirements in this policy. That is new. So they never had, there was never okay. any guidance to really make that determination. So there may be a work session with department heads to talk about this do that. in or out of the budget process because I, I when I sign those claims I think there's probably within those departments there's some that really need it and some that are getting it that really aren't answering calls Could we and, and I these are taxpayer dollars um, so if, if we're paying out extra money um, I think we we need to uh, keep an eye on that, at least have some kind of a process to audit that they're actually doing something to get the stipend. Could we use that as one of our questions that we're going to ask every department when we see them at budget time? If we choose to say, to ask about their cell phone, who's using it, are they familiar with the new guidelines, the new policies? Um, I'm sure now it will probably come up in almost every department. Who's using your cell phone? What is your policy? Did you do an audit? Do you know that it meets the new policy requirements? Yeah, I, you know, to, I, I really think that uh, um, if we should have our our elected officials and department heads reviewing people's cell phone bills occasionally to make sure that they're answering calls and that they need the stipend. I think that's in there. Both the stipend and the county issued phones as well. I'm, I'm more talking about where we, well, if, if somebody has a county cell phone and they're not using it, that's a problem as well. But uh, that's, that's a management problem. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I think, and I'm not saying this is a, uh, a, a big problem. I just don't want it to be a problem. Uh, but I know that we have departments where everybody gets a stipend. And, and, and I hope that that is appropriate, but I don't know that it is. I also don't know that it's inappropriate. The department head or elected official, who's the department head, would know that, and they should at least have a handle on that. And that's, that's my point. And, and it may seem like uh, treating, you know, in the overall scheme of things, treating nickels like uh, manhole covers, but uh, um, these are taxpayer dollars. And uh, I want to make sure that I think... And maybe going to the language, there's, if you go to number three, I think it addresses, you know, the determination. And then if you go to number... 22 you've got language in there related to the review so is is that strong enough language for you so it is but I I, I also think in budget I'll be asking them to come up with okay. because I, I do think that it's broad enough where um, uh, they're responsible for identifying employees hold positions that include the need for cell phone okay I don't think that's real strong. I, oh, I, I, the, the word strong is actually in there. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, if it's not strong enough, that's then you know, we're, we're reviewing this document, so I'm, I'm happy to make it stronger. Um, but number three, number 22, and then 22 specifically talks about review and approval from a department head or elected official On the prior to submission yeah. for auditors. So you've got a couple documents, a couple statements in there about review and okay. oversight, which I'm – comfortable with right now, but if you're not, we can make them more detailed. Okay. I think asking the questions at budget and letting this, first of all, letting this policy go out, and then it lets the department heads know what we're, our expectation is clearly, and then asking the questions right. during budget will... And, and it's probably, um, you know, this is my fourth year on the board, and uh, I haven't really made this an issue, but I think it's from the history of signing claims, it seems like it's pretty consistent. So I, I, I just don't know if people are actually auditing records. So, yeah, agree. And we, this and is I, a new policy. We've never had this policy. So I'm asking, before. yeah. So and I'm yeah, asking, so it is new. I'm asking questions. 
Yeah, and, and that's fair enough. And I think that's, I'm just pointing out, there is language in here addressing yeah. exactly your concerns. Okay. And I think that's a good thing that we're, we're matching those. My other question would be related to open records. And I was trying to find it and I couldn't, I couldn't quickly find it here. Um, how do you address uh, the Freedom of Information Act open records related to phone calls? You know, this year we received our first one from the Telegraph Herald related to our general assistance program. And uh, all of the emails were gathered up and forwarded to the Telegraph Herald at their request. Uh, I'm not familiar if they've ever done that with any of our cell phones. Um, I have not had a request. 18? Number 18. Records. Let's see. So our public records and extended law. And so... The county provided cell phones, so not, it doesn't, so this policy is saying that it excludes the stipend ones. Right, but because then you would be scooping up all their personal emails as well. I think there'd be, we'd need to look at that from a legal perspective, whether it's an invasion of privacy. I think our policy would need to be significantly more extensive to go through well, their privacy concerns, First Amendment. You're, you're hitting just on that because there's well, three, three people here that I know use their personal cell phones for county business all the time. So that's my question. And so how not, should again, we address it? We're not included in this. And we're not getting, as far as I know, I'm not being reimbursed anything. Correct. Nor am I. No, and so you've got a couple issues. And so I don't think reimbursement is a, is a requirement for public open access records. Um, it's just, it's, just my, it's just my question. So what? how are you going to handle it if you get a request, Freedom of Information Act, for give me all the phone calls from a one group to another group I, that's public? I would probably prefer a county attorney to. Um, I just know that with the law, any government-related documents or, or reports are subject to open records, even if they're on your own personal device. Um, I've seen it in the past where I actually had to go get a, a subpoena to obtain that from a personal device. But I would mm -hmm. prefer that the county attorney address that because I think that is a, a legal issue. But the, the phone call itself or a text, if it's related to government-related business, it's my understanding it is subject to open records, regardless of the device. How you obtain it is more of a legal question, I think. So my question to the board is, are you comfortable with the, the language in 18, or would you like more detail related to open records and stipend or non-stipend devices? I would prefer that it remain this way. It's, it's, it does say to the extent required by law, so it's giving that as a broad brush. Um, generally, I think policy should be, should set forth expectations but not necessarily go into those kinds of details. Um, otherwise, we're going to have outdated documents, and someone will need to keep an eye on the legal changes that impact this potentially, both with, in our case, I think at several levels, you know, not just a state law, but it could be um, arbitration, something come down through contract negotiations. There's just a lot. I'm not saying we're not trying to be aware of that, but it seems the policy's purpose is to set forth general direction to the directors. I mean, I don't want to include a legal brief in this. I guess that's my perspective. If we want, I think any more, we're going to have to have the county attorney devise the but language. Has the county attorney reviewed these policies? Okay. Well, this one has not. Okay. Okay. What's your, what are your thoughts here? I, I, I would make a motion to approve. Um, I'll second it. Open for discussion. Yeah, I was just not through with the discussion yet related to, you know, and so my, my question was back to the board, and I heard Supervisor McDonough's response. I did not hear yours, but maybe by second it, you're implicitly okay with the language in 18. That was my question. I was questioning the language and questioning the open records component of this, and if you two are both fine with it, then we should proceed. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm comfortable with it. All right, any other discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0.
after good discussion. All right, next up, 7F, resolution approving the general assistance policy. And we have uh, uh, Josh Jasper here from Resources Unite. Do you want Josh to? Maybe Don could comment on the, the, okay. the county attorney's uh, input. I think he had two items that were changed. Yes. Let me so they're pretty up. minor, so I'm okay. glad he had the review. And So the one that's up here, um, this is not new language. Um, it's just the placement of it. This um, sentence previously um, appeared after what is now the last sentence, so it, it seemed to flow better that we would notify them in writing before their actual appeal. So it's no new language, it's just placement of the sentence. And then he asked to clarify um, that the family member is residing in the household. And that term had been used in a couple other places as well. So we just added um, those four words. I was comfortable with both those changes if that's what he he had recommended. Yes. Okay. And other than that, then this has been reviewed mm -hmm. yes. by the county attorney? Yes, he gave me these changes Friday, and I sent okay. those out to you. Josh, have you had a chance to look at this other than? Okay. And this... All right, at your pleasure. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution as presented with the two modifications from the county attorney. Okay. Motion's made, is there a second? I will second it. Uh, motion made and seconded, open for discussion. I continue to have um, concern about the appeal procedure and that is that this um, procedure, excuse me, this policy document allows for Resources Unite to create an independent initial appeal committee um, that we don't have oversight over, unlike our other boards and commissions. We don't know who serves on this. We, um, we are not in, in any way exercising any of our own supervision or even having the right to know who those folks are on that initial appeal committee. I have hesitation about that, um, and I don't think that our stakeholders um, in the community at large are necessarily comfortable with this in initial appeal committee. That is a significant and a dramatic change to general assistance from the way it has always gone on before. And while I understand the county attorney has reviewed this and has not raised that as uh, an objection, and I also acknowledge that we have, and I appreciate, Josh, that you submitted your confidentiality agreement. I have read through that as well. I am uncomfortable with this as part of our policy, and that is my primary reason that I'm going to be voting no. Okay, and I will comment on this as well. Part that the reason I will be voting yes for this is that in the past, uh, almost all of our applicants were uh, deemed ineligible and uh, forced to go through the appeal process, uh, and. Uh, uh, because of the artificially low uh, poverty standards that we had adopted, uh, we've we've at the recommendation of uh, Mr. Jasper and and Resources Unite, we've modernized uh, those. Uh, I think everybody agrees that somebody uh, the, the the threshold being six thousand dollars a year uh, was a bit low. Um, and uh, so we've modernized that, and it's up to about 12,000 now uh, for someone to be eligible. Um, that's, that's in the policy. But there will be folks that can be helped um, with, uh, uh, without coming to the board and without creating an automatic appeal process. And it was part of the proposal uh, initially uh, this board, and I'm, I'm comfortable that 
uh, with the submission of the confidentiality, confidentiality policy um, that uh, that will be adhered to. So I will be voting for it. So any other comments or discussions? Yeah, I would echo that this is, uh, in your Supervisor McDonough's words, significant and dramatic changes. And so I'm, I'm pleased with that because I, I felt that's what we needed to do. Uh, you look at the separation between Veterans Affairs responsibilities and duties uh, to dedicated to Veterans Affairs. I've already seen them implement new programs and take on new initiatives to, to serve our veterans, and, and I think that's wonderful. And that was one of the primary goals of, of separating the, these responsibilities. Um, the second piece is just, Supervisor Baker mentioned, the eligibility requirements changing those and then actually changing that appeal process uh, I think will give us a much, much, much improved outcome um, compared to my my last four years of, of being on the board and going through those appeal processes. So I also will be voting in favor of this. Okay. Something else I'd like to point out, and I think it's important for the community to know that today we'll be having a status report filed by uh, Resources Unite that will be discussed here in a, in a work session, I believe. Is that correct, Don? Yeah. And um, some of the numbers of applications to uh, general assistance, that what the total number is, and then further what the applications have been to even the appeal committee. Uh, there's only been two um, appeals from denial of services, as I understand this, and that only one further appeal came to the Board of Supervisors, and that, that, is, that person appealed and came here because that um, individual and family contacted me personally and I was able to, with enough time, they explained where they were in the process with Resources Unite and that they had been denied, verbally at least. We were able to get it onto our agenda um, to have them have a written appeal and then come up to see us. That's been the only appeal to the Board of Supervisors since September 1st. And um, there's only been two other appeals to the appeal committee. And um, so, and that is without enhancing the financial eligibility without making more individuals um, eligible for just an outright um, yes, a, a positive determination of their request. So th the numbers of denials and the numbers of appeals do not reflect what we would expect. Again, I would say significant and dramatic. I'll use those words again. So I think that um, I know I am in the minority on this, and that is fine. And I also know we are far enough into the detail that the community wants us to move past this. They would like to actually begin to see how the process is working, and so we're going to turn a new page. But um, I do think that that, again, that you can increase your financial eligibility. You can allow folks to have greater income and still be able to apply for general assistance. That is one issue. The second is that appeal process, and it is the appeal process that um, that I will be. Just want you to know that that's it's not the increase in the money. I'm in the minority on that, but um, that's the st final sticking issue for me. Okay, and and it, then I'll also comment that uh, um, again. Part of the reason that I voted uh, to uh, go with uh, uh, having. Um, Resources Unite um, handle this program is the ability to refer them to other services. I think it's referred to as wraparound services and the familiarity of, um, of Mr. Jasper and his organization with many of the individuals that come seeking assistance. And uh, uh, I have also had uh, discussions with Mr. Jasper about individual cases uh, and I think uh, I find that uh, he's been very responsive uh, on those so all right uh, all I guess all in favor the motion was made in second all in favor signify by saying aye 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 opposed nay carried two to one okay next up on the agenda is item number eight communications <clears throat> Uh, proof of publication for zoning cases. Okay, we have uh, 8B, Assessed Valuation Litigation Settlement 2019. Who 
who's uh, it's just a notification from the legal process related to their appeal okay this is the Martin Luther home um, property <coughs> assessment appeal board and I'm not familiar with any of the background um, about this so I know that I know what our proper action is supposed to be but um, it would be interesting to know maybe some more details um, about it, but I can pursue that individually. This time I'd make a motion to receive and file. And I will second that. Okay, motion to receive and file. <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. Number nine. Uh, Approval of appointments, 9A, 1, Dubuque Township application. We have the application of Timothy, oops, Timothy Noel, is that right? Timothy Noel. And make a motion to approve the trustee application of Timothy Noel. And I will second that. Okay. Any. The motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. And then we have uh, EMS Advisory Committee. So we're into 9B, open vacancies on boards and commissions. Uh, we have a uh, EMS Advisory Committee application of Rob Wiedenbacher. Um, and I know Rob is real active in He's been the recipient this of, area. One of, of one of the highest awards. Yes, um, at the Hall of Flame. Right. Uh, He's, he had, I actually think in his application he was rather modest. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to approve the application of Bob Wiedenbacher. And I will second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. And then uh, we have... The uh, uh, for informational purposes, showing uh, uh, that uh, we have openings. Uh, I believe uh, that uh, we'll have an applicant for the Sunnycrest uh, Manor Operations Board um, forthcoming, um, and I have uh, started uh, recruiting as well. We have uh, three or four openings on that board. And uh, need to have some folks on there, and we're looking for health care related uh, folks for that if we can get them. So, all right, um, anything else under approval of appointments? Now we'll go to item number 10 personnel requisitions. Got uh, 10A, Assistant Health Director. have our health director and our board chair here as well I'm not sure if they want to comment on this the question I had is if the pay range was the the same if that was consistent I don't know if you knew that no that was for the naturalist for oh, this one I, um, no this oh, is the the current salary this is wage. bargaining unit right this is no this is no, this not, is not this bargaining is, this is a non bargaining okay. position okay and then we looked at this last year or we asked you to look at it and I think we I don't recall that we came to a clear understanding of whether or not this was the pay range that we wish to be in. Have you had discussion with Patrice, um, our director of public health? Is this an agreed upon range? I, I've had discussion with Tom. Um, Tom and I went through, had several meetings on it, and we no, we decided not to make any changes to it. Okay. So this is we're approving so that they can go forward and with the hiring process. That is correct. Okay, and I, I can tell you that we need to we need to do this ASAP. So. Motion to approve. Yeah. And I will second that motion. Okay. Any <coughs> dis further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. All right. Uh, next up is ten B naturalist. Um, we have the uh, salary range. And this was tabled previously. Do we have any updates? Right? That is correct. So Brian and I went um, kind of very similar to our budget process last year and looked at 
Um, the Iowa County is number six through 10. Um, Dubuque County is currently number eight. Um, we also obtained the salary information from some of our local or um, um, in close proximity counties because they are ones that we recruit against or, or buy for, um, for these positions. And so what you have there is the average of all of those um, entry um, minimum and maximum salary ranges. So we thought it was fitting to put that since we're number eight um, in that range that we thought we would get, we would uh, propose a wage scale that was near the average of all of those. So that is what you have in front of you. I don't, can you clarify that? What do we have in front of us? So this is a new proposed wage scale that is um, very close to the average of the salaries for the number six through 10 counties. Um, and then we also had three other counties that um, Brian provided the information for that we would normally compete with for these types of positions, some of the local counties. And how does this relate to what the current pay is? So at the, at the maximum, it's about $4,000 more a year. So this is different than when we first saw this. That is correct. Yep. So the request for, for us was to review the salaries. Uh, and so we did look in, again, kind of the same process that we used last year through the budget process <coughs> is really look at those counties that are more our size. And that's when we determine the number six through 10 counties. Is it likely that this modification to salary range will impact our budget in terms of other, other improvements for salary for people? In the conservation, you do have a, a naturalist, so he has two budgeted for it, and so this would be a pay increase for the current one, um, and then he would have to either make an amendment for the rest of this year. But yes, it would change. He has two full-time naturalist positions. So that's a little bit of my concern: is that by doing it this way, we're actually impacting the budget beyond just a person that we're going to try to find a higher, a qualified candidate. We're actually going to be increasing the pay to current employees, should we be having this that conversation first before we do this? I, I, my request was to follow the similar process we did with, help me, I, IT facilities, roads, maybe roads. roads department. And so we, we didn't quite get there. Um, so there's additional data and information that I was presented with at the conservation board that I don't believe has been shared with you two yet. Um, so, you know, I'm comfortable with the outcome, but uh, we didn't exactly follow the same process, which I'm not objecting to, I'm just stating. We were moving quickly. <laughs> yeah, and, and is this because he has a position that he needs to fill? Yes. Otherwise, it could have waited until budget? If there was a vacancy and the request was made of us, and so that's what we did. We started that. The process. IT came during pretty much during the budget process. Roads and, and IT did come through the right. budget process last year. Not right. this way, through an opening in a, at a recruitment posting. That's my concern is yeah. that what we're doing is posting a requisition, but we're going to, by doing this, actually already have committed to something we don't have any more materials before us today about. We're not going into, we haven't posted on our agenda, um, budget discussion about impact on current employees. That's different. Here, here's my feelings on it. Uh, I, I don't have enough information to approve this. Um, so as, as Supervisor Wickham said, but nor do I want to vote against it. I don't, I don't want to defeat this. So uh, my recommendation would be that we uh, table this uh, uh, and uh, that we, Supervisor McDonough and I receive all the information and that we have Brian in the room to talk about, uh, you know, uh, recruiting where he gets, where the folks come from that he seeks out. Um, and uh, we have more information. I'm not, um, I, 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 like I said, like I said last time, last year, um, if we just start throwing out upgrades Everybody, there's going to be a line out the door and down the steps out to Central Avenue. Uh, and and uh, you know, we, we just can't operate that way. So um, I'm, I'm not likely to support this today with the lack of information that I have. I make a motion to table. I will second that. 
The motion made and seconded to table. Discussion? Is there any further discussion? I would like to know when we are going to have um, the conservation department before us as part of our budget sessions because I don't, I do not wish to have this come back before us until we've addressed it inside the budget itself. So we have had our good thorough discussion about what the other requests are, what are the needs that's, that are going to be coming from conservation. Um, and because I, I don't think this is the only um, personnel request that there's going to be, I'd like to see it, I would like to see it all. Now I'm hoping that that does not delay this position for six weeks. Well, will. <laughs> well, we we're not then, able to hire them. <laughs> so the tentative schedule that the budget director has proposed would be that the conservation department comes in front of you on January 31st. So it would be after this would come back to you on our 20, the meeting on the 27th. Right. So I guess that's that's what I would say in discussion. I want to hear from the conservation department their complete budget, including any capital improvement requests. I'd like to see the whole thing before we go forward with wage increases. There is an option. We, Brian could contact one of us about scheduling a work session before the 27th on this particular issue um, and uh, give us the information. But my hesitancy will be the same, which is without seeing the overall department budget, it impacts more than just a person. So I, I want to see it all. Whether it comes in two weeks, it still predates when they'll be before us as a department. Okay, and then maybe as part of that, he can lobby with Stella for There's getting moved up. If, and, and you know, I, I'm, I know this is an important position, um, but uh, if the position's open now, and I'm pretty sure business is being conducted and taken care of, uh, there's probably a few uh, you know, less outreach uh, type things and definitely less programs. You know, yeah, and that that's and that, but we we, we have that because of the <laughs> sudden departure of an employee. So, yeah, I think it just echo in general what the yeah. supervisor said. I would like to have the conservation director here. Yeah. Um, I think generally speaking, I was very pleased to see Tom and uh, Patrice here from Health. They had a requisition on here, and so if they can know that there's items that the board's considering that are changes, um, it's probably important that those directors be here okay. uh, and be consistent. Okay. All right, there was a motion made and seconded to table. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. All right, I uh, believe. <clears throat> Okay, uh, tabled and pending items, I don't see any. Okay, uh, public comments. At this time, anyone may address the board on matters of which are of concern to that person which are not agenda items. Please go to the podium, state your name and home address, make your comments. However, no formal action on your comments may be taken at this time because of notice requirements. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to recess till 11 o'clock. So moved. And I will second that. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried. We are in recess.